So the extradition request comes through. The United States government is taking its time to consider it. Uh, I get to know later why it is taking so long, but eventually I am arrested. When are you arrested? I'm arrested, uh, I will say, on or about uh, June of 1984. And just so that we get the chronology correct, the extradition proceedings begin in February. Am I right? The proceedings begin, yes. From Liberia, not from in the Liberia. US courts. That is correct. Thereafter, you travel to West Africa and return. That's correct. And it's upon your return in June of 1984 that you are, in fact, arrested. That is correct. At that stage, are you placed in custody? Immediately, yes. Where were you placed in custody? Um, firstly, I'm arrested in Boston, uh, Massachusetts, and I'm taken to the Plymouth County House of Correction. And where is that? That's a uh, uh, way out outside of Boston. Uh, I would say, I, I can't really calculate. I would In which state? Massachusetts. Okay. And for how long are you held on remand at that institution? I'm held there for about 15 months up to about, I would say, uh, November uh, 1985. And during that 15-month period, what's happening in terms of the extradition proceedings? The court has already decided that there exists a valid treaty between the United States and Liberia. The courts are finished. The matter is now at the Department of State to determine if they should go ahead with the actual movement of me into Liberia. It is no longer a matter of the law. That's finished. Now, did you instruct lawyers in the United States? Well, yes. Um, I did obtain the, the services of uh, the uh, former United States Attorney General, Ramsey Clark. Uh, he was Attorney General during the Johnson administration to uh, represent my interests uh, during my incarceration. And uh, after you were held in custody, were any further steps taken by the Liberian government to secure your return to Liberia? Oh yeah, uh, <clears throat> you, 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 you have to imagine uh, they were very anxious. Uh, uh, Doe wanted me back, but we, our, our concerns, in fact, what, what delayed the request was this, everybody, and when I say everybody, I'm referring to the United States government knew very well that at stake at that time had nothing to do because, I mean, with $900,000, because that was not the issue. $900,000 had been paid to a vendor. The vendor had admitted that he had received the money. So, and they could have gone after the vendor for the money. The money was not paid to Charles Taylor. They knew that the money had been processed, but at the bottom of it, they knew that Kuangpa, having disappeared, that Do wanted me because he knew that Kuangpa and I working together would have been a problem. So the United States government was very aware, and what was at stake at that particular time was the Department, the Secretary of State, was concerned that I would be killed if I was sent back to Liberia. So 
Within that period, there were discussions going on, and I guess, and I was not part of those discussions, I would say from experience, trying to maybe secure assurances from the Doe government that no such thing would happen. Mm. So it took some time uh, because the courts had decided within the first three months that there was a valid, I would say three to six months that there was a valid treaty. So they were finished. Mm. The rest of the time was just diplomatic arguments, agreements. And the United States, in a way, I will believe, and I'm not quoting from any U.S. sources, uh, but they were aware that General Kuwampa was planning his return. And from my own diplomatic instinct, and I'm speaking about the contacts that I had from the prison with General Kuwampa, I think that the United States, and this is a thought only, I have no official statement from the United States government, they did not want to send me back to Liberia. I think they were sure that Doe would harm me. But knowing that something was coming up, I guess they were buying time for that to take place before I was sent back to Liberia. And, and, uh, and I want to be honest, I'm not saying this because somebody told me this, but because of the work that they were doing at the time with General Kuwampa, fearing that I would be killed, not wanting me to go back all systems by time. And it is my own genuine belief, and I'm not speculating, that they were buying time and really didn't want to send me back. Let's pause and seek your assistance with one little detail. Tell me, who was Solicitor General at the time in Liberia? Uh, the Solicitor General at the time that uh, was processing that extradition sits in this court right now. He was Counselor Lavalier Superwood, my lawyer. And uh, as Solicitor General of Liberia, he was seeking your extradition from the United States, wasn't he? That is correct, but he was one of the progressives too. Now, you were telling us about people that Kwiwampo was working with in the United States. Who was he working with in the United States? Now, <clears throat> Kwiwampo is with the two Catholic fathers and James Butte. I speak to him on a collect call from Speak James to whom? General Kuwampa uh, on the telephone uh, from the, the Plymouth County House of Correction you have to uh, call collect calls I'm not sure what they do in other places in America and I speak to him several times but we cannot really talk I know he's there for a reason but he sends uh, a gentleman by the name of Harry Nua spelling please uh, that Oh, I would say N Y U E N. It's really Nua. Nua. Uh, some people call it, and they say Nua, but it's Nua. Uh, told me to visit with me at the Plymouth uh, County House of Correction in Massachusetts. And he briefed me of what is going on regarding uh, what's being put together. Uh, in urging that I have patience, I then say, ask him to... No, before we get ahead of ourselves, mm -hmm. what does he tell you is going on? Uh, he tells me that uh, uh, the particular agency that I mentioned are working along with them. Um, let's not be coy, Mr. Taylor. Which agency? Oh, we said the CIA. I mean... I mean, we're not going to beat this also. Right, so yeah. let's use CIA rather than agency, please. Okay. So help us, what did he tell you? That they were working very closely with the general and that uh, plans were afoot to uh, return to Sierra Leone, I mean, to, not return, to go to Sierra Leone, and that all, all plans had been uh, put together for the training in Sierra Leone 
and uh, the eventual uh, move into Liberia. And let me just, uh, Your Honors, I want to, uh, I, I made a statement here earlier about who was president. Now, I, I may be a little off. It had to be somewhere between Siaka Stevens, because I can remember Kuang Ba said the old man. But old man, because I'm in prison in America, I'm not, it, it could have been Siaka Stevens who later died and Mamo took over. I will have to reflect my memory on this. And I'm sure it's in the record I said Momo, but I thought about it because he kept saying the old man, the old man. And uh, most of us knew Siaka Stevens as the old man. Okay, so I'm told that they are moving, they are planning, uh, and that the weapons and equipment will be given, and that, in fact, they will be paid for. So the, the weapons from, from the Sierra Leonean government at that time, I am 100% positive that was used by General Kuangpa was not a donation. They were paid for by the CIA. 